Welcome back to another tutorial in the Cakewalk by BandLab series. Today, we're going to discuss how signal flow works within this DAW and how it can affect your audio. Below this video will be a link for you to download a picture to help you better visualize the signal flow discussed in this video. You can print this out and pin it close to your mixing station if need be until you grasp the concept of Cakewalk signal flow. Let's begin by looking at the chart and following the signal flow path together to better understand the diagram. On the left side, we see a scenario where the audio is already in place. For instance, this could be a loop that was pre-recorded or even a sample. Following the chart down, we see that the signal flows from the top to the bottom and how that audio is affected in process. Signal flow in Cakewalk will always flow from top to bottom, and if at any time you lose perspective of which is which, refer to this handy little chart provided by Cakewalk. Now, on the right side, we see a tie-in to the signal flow. This shows a guitar going into an audio interface, or just beside it on the far right, a soft synth that is going directly to the input meter. This shows us that whatever instrumentation is added, the clip from that recorded audio will be affected the same as before, with the exception of effects added onto the clip bin itself, or our input gain settings. Now, in order to have effects on the clip, one must first have a clip. So really the input gain will be the most applicable to the vast majority of scenarios. Your audio will not be affected on the way in except by input gain if you're recording into your DAW. Now let's get back to the signal flow chart. After your audio is placed into your mix, from here the signal flow follows the same downward path to the phase interleave button and then into your playback meter. It is here that the most confusion is introduced because now we approach the pro channel. You'll notice a broken bar on the diagram which signifies a door or a gate of sorts. If you place the pro channel in post mode, the gate will be closed and all audio after the effects bin will be affected by the pro channel after passing through the added effects, hence the word post. However, by default, the pro channel is set to pre as indicated by this button that's grayed out. We can see in this first example that there's no processing being done on this audio, and it is following the signal path to the fader without interference, making it an uncolored source track. Going back to the signal flow diagram, we can see that the only thing that will affect the audio before our input gain at this point is an effect placed directly on the track in the clip effects bin. I'm going to place an effect in the clip effects bin for demonstration purposes. The clip effects bin can be accessed by either right clicking on the waveform itself or by clicking the effects tab in the upper right hand corner located at the end point of the track. At this point, if I were to press play, the clip effect would actually interfere with the input gain of this track before the track effects bin. In this example, you can hear how that the audio is affected by enabling the clip effects before the track effects. As stated before, the Pro Channel is by default set to the Pre position. Assuming that you've left it that way, the next stop in the signal flow will be the Pro Channel. Any effects in the Track Effects bin by default will be heard after the Pro Channel effects unless you want to hear them before by selecting Post. Pre sets the Pro Channel before the Track Effects and Post sets the Pro Channel after the Track Effects. Now let's take a listen to how the pre and post setting affects the audio as it's passing through. On the left hand side of the screen you'll see that I've enabled the tube drive on the pro channel and set it to maximum in order to hear what exactly is happening to the audio in the post fader position. I'm also going to enable a reverb on the channel effects bin to exaggerate the effects so that it can be more easily heard. Listen closely as I place the track in pre and post mode on the pro channel, specifically for the transients.
Moving further down the signal chain, the first thing to affect your audio after effects have been added is the volume fader, unless you have sends in place. When sends are in place, you're now rerouting audio to another track in your virtual console known as a bus or an auxiliary track. Yet again, the same pre and post fader rules apply, yet by default the send is set to post fader meaning that your send level will not be affected by your track's main fader only by the send level. In this example, you can see and actually hear this in action. So by default, your audio will be blaring full bore into the bus you've routed it into until you turn down the send level. This also means that the mute and solo buttons will affect the send's output. If it is placed in pre-fader mode, you can mute the main track and still hear the audio on the bus because now the send or the gate is closed and the signal flows through the send before the mute solo option is enabled. Here's an example of the mute and solo buttons being bypassed by the pre and post settings. This is also how sends can be used to create custom headphone mixes for musicians and also allows for various mixes within a mix, otherwise known as a bus mix or an auxiliary mix. If you don't have headphone mixes going out to artists, simply leave it in the default mode and adjust your volumes by the send volume slider. Essentially send more or less of the audio to that bus as needed. At this point, the signal flows to the stereo bus or surround bus, and it's pretty straightforward from here. Your master bus, or mix bus as some call it, or two bus as some call it, whatever you want to call it, it is where the audio is affected one last time before leaving to your headphones, speakers, and ultimately your beautiful little ears. I hope this video has been helpful in understanding the signal flow of Cakewalk. If this video or the whole host of other ones on this channel have been helpful in any way, consider subscribing, give it a big thumbs up, and also click that bell icon to be notified when I upload a new video. If you feel that all of my efforts are in vain and I deserve to be tarred and feathered, then show the world your discontent by giving me a thumbs down. Likewise, if you're a kind-hearted soul that appreciates all of the effort that's put into videos like this that are free for you but chip away at hours of my life, consider supporting this channel using the PayPal link below and donating whatever you feel like my time is worth. So until next time, you all have a blessed day.